Welcome to Abbeville United Methodist Church. Welcome to everybody in the house to this morning and welcome to everybody online. It's a beautiful fall morning. It is fall, right? Did, it, did we actually turn over to fall? Yes. Feels like it. Fall. fall is here. Got a few announcements this morning. We'll go, if you look at the opportunities for the week, just look over those and be prepared to be here and be in service to the church and to the Lord for that. This morning is communion to celebrate the death and burial and resurrection of our precious Lord. Please note that we have a basket here, if you will and can donate to that to support our World Vision children and their communities to help them see the love of Jesus Christ through giving. You know, some people think money doesn't show the love of Jesus, but it does when you reach out and feed them because we have to feed them first and then, you know, get them and then taken care of. Uh, administrative board meeting is very important. Please be here after the 11 o'clock service. I think there will be a lot meal will be served. Is that right, Sally? Thank you. Wednesday night, family night, um, 6 o'clock, Sally's great cooking, Chef Sally in the corner over here. Um, then 6.45 for Randy and his Bible study, and then 6.45 for the children, Tina and Andy in the choir room. Moonlighters, missions concert, y'all remember that's, that money stays local, most of it. And then they're October the 16th, dinner at 5.30. Concert at 6, we will have a dance floor for people to know how to swing dance. And I think every now and then they'll do a slow song so that people like me can pretend like we can dance. Um, please, is there still tickets available, Tina? Yes, yes. We, we, do, we have about, excuse me, We have about 45 tickets left, so if you haven't gotten a ticket, um, we have them. I have them with me this morning. I'll call the office or call me, let me know, we'll get you a ticket reserved. So if you don't want to come, just buy a ticket or two tickets and donate it to somebody's complimentary that might just get them into the church and then visiting and maybe future, you know, people here coming. Jason, will you pull this down just a little bit? It's ringing. Thank you. Um, Samaritan's Purse, the collection is November 15th through the 22nd. And so if you don't have boxes or need boxes, you can reach out to the church office for that, for the shoe boxes and get those turned in. Anything else this morning? Any additional announcements this morning? If not, I'm going to turn it over to Miss Tina and we'll get our service started. If you would, let's all please stand for the Word of God. Our scripture this morning is from the book of Exodus, chapter 13, verses 21 and 22. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, so as to go by day and night. He did not take away the pillar of cloud by day or the pillar of fire by night from before the people. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please bow your head for prayer. Heavenly Father, what a glorious picture of your loving leadership and guidance in the life of your people. The pillar of cloud by day, the pillar of fire by night, that, was not, that did not depart from before them. You were giving them direction and guidance day and night. As followers of Christ, we have your spirit living in us. You are guiding and leading us day and night. Help us to be obedient to you, your word, and your commands. We trust that you will lead, guide, and direct us just as you've done for your people throughout history. By your spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. At this time, if we would all reaffirm our faith by the reading of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. Third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence ye shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. one of those songs shine Jesus shine that the kids are learning and so we figured if the kids are learning it that you guys may be able to pick it up too uh, I realize that kids are a little easier uh, they, they just they're in that mode but uh, we as adults can pick this up and this is kind of an older song but it's a it's a great song and uh, it just talks about God shining his light for us and we're going to be talking about the wilderness experience, and you heard Tina read the scripture about uh, the uh, cloud by day and the fire by night. So think about that as we sing this song.
song to learn and there's another one we want you to learn that uh, this song requires your participation it is a repeat song and you're going to see uh, the first part of it in uh, just the uh, without the parentheses and the par parenthetical things you're supposed to repeat so uh, so we're going to try this and see what happens and uh, just remember that uh, we're going to say some things over and over again in this song. Uh, we're going to talk about how uh, everywhere I go, I see you. And this is the message that God was trying to get across to the people in the wilderness. For 40 years, he wanted to drive this point home that I'm before you in a cloud by day and I'm before you with fire by night and I'm before you by putting my tabernacle which means dwelling in your in your midst in your camp so God is constantly trying to tell us to do this so we're going to remind ourselves this morning
caught on. I think you probably got that song figured out by now, don't you? You can be seated. This is a, a, a new song. Uh, it's Communion Sunday this Sunday. And on Communion Sunday, we are reminded of the mysterious nature of God's presence with us. Uh, God is here with us. God is present with us. Our monitor is giving us some issues, so thank you, Ron. Thank but uh, God is present with us in all that is going on. He's present with us in the beauty around us. He's present with us as we uh, go through our day and experience hardships. Uh, he is there. Uh, the Bible says God is close to the brokenhearted. And so this song is all about the wondrous mystery of God. It's about God being here in that mysterious way even when we don't see him and uh, this was the message to the people in the wilderness again that, that God was there that God was listening, watching participating in their lives and so this is a new song and uh, if you pick it up with us and want to sing this with us it's just, a, it's just a beautiful expression of God's mysterious presence
the last line, Christ in power resurrected as we will be when he comes. Amen. just love our time of worship and I, I look forward to this time every Sunday and I think okay we're on thank you and uh, as we talk about tabernacles and thresholds and God's presence one of the ways God comes to us is when we come to him in prayer so we come to him now at that time when we lift up our praises our prayers and often we just want to bring God our needs. We just want to lay things out there. We talked Wednesday night about some needs that are going on, uh, some things that are happening. And some of the needs that we prayed for, God has responded. But just remember, God responds to us, not just in those things, but he responds to us when we look up to him and praise him and just thank him for who he is. And that's what we're trying to do as we lead worship. We're we're not trying to entertain. We're not trying to be good. We, uh, we, we want to do the best we can, but we want to point to God first and foremost. So uh, as we point to God, do you have prayers? Do you have praises? Do you have things you want to lay before God and just, uh, and just say thank you? Ron. Ricky Treadwell, car accident. Uh, all right. The, the, okay. Others? Jason. I would like to put Cody and Jess on the prayer list for next Saturday. Next Saturday, Cody and Jess will be married, and we are excited about that, and I'm excited that we're going to be uh, we're going to be with you and present with you and just just remember that when your church is present with you what we're really doing is we're reflecting what God is is doing all the time we're reflecting God's presence with you and so we're going to be there and uh, when someone joins this church uh, at the end of a service one of the questions we ask them is uh, we look out at the, uh, the group of people that's there and we say, will, will you help this person do what they've just committed to do? Will you be there for them? Will you be present with them? And so uh, we will be there for you and we will be present with you. Uh, so uh, as we sing these songs, we want to make sure you know that. So, yes. Jessica Martin uh, lost her life. She was murdered, and uh, she has a 13-year-old son. Well, I want to pray a prayer of praise. Last uh, yesterday, we were out at the uh, uh, out at the park next to the armory, and uh, the community gathered, and we just had people from all walks of life out there, and they were eating food and looking at helicopters and doing all sorts of crazy things and uh, one of the things that happened is a lot of the ministers from the area got to go up on the stage and just say a few words and so uh, we heard this message of unity and this message of grace and the fact that we shouldn't be known as a church uh, by our differences and by our separation but we should be known as our unity with one another uh, Christ prayed for it in his last prayer. Uh, Deuteronomy 6 talks about the Lord your God is one and the oneness of God and the oneness of God's presence with us. So uh, God's not separating this world by secular and sacred. He's not separating this world by groups of people. God looks out at us and he says, I want to invite you into my presence where everything is sacred. And so we come doing that, and we'll start out doing that with prayer this morning. Lord, 
We come to you this morning excited about what you're doing, excited about our time of worship, excited about our time of prayer, excited about the songs we just shared together, uh, how you shine your light in us, how these are the days of Elijah, how uh, we can behold that wondrous mystery, and that mystery is that everywhere we go, we see you if we're just looking. We just open our eyes if we just say to ourselves Lord we invite you in we invite you right here right now we're not going to talk to you all the time we're going to listen a lot because you have so much to say to us the wondrous mystery of your presence the wondrous mystery of the grace you pour out on us the wondrous mystery of the word that you've given us that you invite us into and you say I put my dwelling in my people I put my dwelling into hearts we ask our children do you want Jesus into your heart and and they say yes and they say it openly and they say it invitingly and we as adults say it less openly and less invitingly because We are far more fearful than a little child who has faith and hope and sees things in a different light. So, Lord, let us come to you this morning as little children, coming into your presence, remembering what you are doing and what you have done. And as we do that, Lord, let us remember that you taught us some ways of being invited into your presence. And one of those was... You taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, we come this morning talking about thresholds and tabernacles, and we talk about the wilderness experience of people, uh, the people of Israel. Uh, We know the story. Moses goes into Egypt, and the plagues happen, and Moses is talking to the Pharaoh, saying, let my people go, and Finally, the Pharaoh relents, but then he changes his mind and he chases them out to the Red Sea. And the Red Sea is parted and the people of Israel cross the Red Sea into the wilderness. And the Pharaoh's army is covered up by the waves and the water. And and so we we know that great deliverance where uh, in Exodus 19, we hear about, uh, about that when... God says, remember how I brought you out of Egypt on eagle's wings to bring you to myself. And so we know that whole story. But what does God do once all this happens? Well, I think God provides leadership. That's one of the first things that happens. And I want to talk about a couple of words that relate to leadership because in order to get out of the desert, in order to get out of Egypt, to get out of the wilderness, we need leaders. We need to be led. And, and God took that upon himself. And I, I went, went back and looked at the origin of the word leader. We have a lot of people that talk about leadership and, 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 and claim to know a lot about leadership. But I think God knows more than anybody about that. And I think God gives us some of these old words and the first word is Leiden which is a German word Uh, it uh, it means to go Uh, there's an old English translation of that that means to travel and the word kind of means to show the way to God and it's the first it's it's part of the origin of the word leader and then there's a another old word uh, I believe this was derived from Latin and it's Lidere, and it uh, it means to go before, to guide across a threshold, to beckon others forward, to take people on a journey, and it's the closest leadership word 
to the concept that I'm trying to get across. Uh, I saw this in a leadership uh, seminar by this guy named Peter Sange. And Peter Sange is my favorite leadership guru because he goes back to these roots. And these roots really are founded in the biblical nature of leadership. And in Exodus, we think of Moses leading the people, and that's kind of who we have in our minds. Uh, the Pharaoh looked out, and he was looking for a leader, and he, he saw Moses. And then the people saw what Moses did as far as inviting the plagues on Egypt, so they're looking to Moses. And God is constantly reminding them that Moses works for me. Moses is your leader, and he was there, and he was flawed and uncertain and very human. But God does the work. He goes before, he beckons forward, and he shows the way. And here is God's word from Exodus 13, beginning with verse 21. The Lord went ahead of them. He guided them during the day with a pillar of cloud, and he provided a light at night with a pillar of fire. This allowed them to travel by day or by night. And the Lord did not remove the pillar of cloud or pillar of fire from its place in front of the people. And as I think about that statement, I think about God going before, being their leader, and I think about God dwelling among the people and about how God is leading them across thresholds. And thresholds have to be crossed to get where we're going. And thresholds are those things that separate one place for another. When you go out of this building, you will cross a threshold. There's actually two. There's one at the first back door, and then there's another one at the second back door. And as you go across those thresholds, you're doing what we talk about in a lot of the literature about this church and we say the church has left the building you have left this building but you are the church you never cease to be God's people you never cease to be indwelled by God God is going with you and God leads you across that threshold leaders go first and people follow thresholds imply change and thresholds imply movement now this gets to the idea of tabernacles. The tabernacle was called the tent of meeting. It was where Moses went and where the priests went. And in the tent of meeting, Moses would go there and he would talk to God. Now I want to tell you that when Moses talked to God, God did a lot of the talking. Moses did a lot of listening. And we need to remember that in Moses' relationship with God. Uh, he goes into the tabernacle and God has instruction. God has ordained the tabernacle's presence. He called it the tent of meeting. It was in the camp and everywhere they went, people would look over and they could always see the tabernacle and they always knew that God was with them and God was present. And that in that tabernacle, uh, God was assuring them that he had not forgotten about them. Uh, you see some of the, uh, the, the descriptions or the drawings of a tabernacle in that picture. And you see, the, you see the clouds and you see the people. And the people are outside and the priests are inside and, and Moses is inside. And... Uh, in Exodus 25, 9, it's very interesting what God says. He says, all its furnishings will be exactly like the pattern I will show you. God directed the building. And if you notice the tabernacle, there's one of, one of my favorite things about the tabernacle wasn't the ornateness and it wasn't that God had prescribed all these things for people to do and be. The thing I love about the tabernacle the most is, you see all those poles up around the sides? You know what those are there for? They're there to remind us the tabernacle is portable. 
the tabernacle moves. I don't know if y'all have ever been camping, but uh, way, way, way back there, Lee and I went on this hike down into this uh, place where there was primitive camping. Y'all have been primitive camping? Some, some of you shaking your head, yes. If you've ever been primitive camping, you carry everything in. Your entirety of what you're going to be doing and, and what is going to support you, you're carrying with you, including your tent. And uh, Lee and I went down into this place where uh, there, uh, Lee thought that it was a bird sanctuary because she saw a sign out front. And so she's looking for birds all the time. Sign didn't say bird sanctuary. The sign said bear sanctuary. I didn't tell her until we got out because I was afraid she wouldn't go in there. But as we went down in there, we pitched our tent on the flattest place we could find, which wasn't very flat. And I remember waking up in the morning and our legs were sticking outside the tent, just kind of hanging out there. And I was thinking to myself, does a bear look at that and think it looks like a popsicle? Uh, it, 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 was a, it was an uncomfortable place. It was, it was difficult. You had to carry everything around with you. And these people were just like that. They carried everything with them as they went through the wilderness and as they wandered for 40 years. And this routine was picked up over and over again. And when and where to move was defined by God. God tried to move them across the Jordan River really early in that game. And they didn't want to go because they were afraid. You know what God did? God says, I'll be patient. I will wait for another generation to come about. And maybe that generation will do what they're supposed to do and cross the river. I've always wondered what would happen if that generation had said, Nah, we're still scared. I think God would have, would have left them out there another 40 years and said, okay, we'll wait for another generation because God is patient. But God is also persistently present. And so he's persistently present with them. Uh, Exodus 13, 21. By day the Lord went ahead of them and a pillar of, with a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way and by night a pillar of fire to give them light so they could travel by day or night. The tabernacle is portable. The uh, tabernacle was moved by God with the people. And I want to remind you the process wasn't comfortable and it wasn't easy. Now I want to remind you We've been singing songs today that related to this message. Uh, one of the things we're going to be doing very intentionally, we always have done this, but we're going to be doing it even more intentionally, is please listen to the words of the songs and the concepts they're trying to get across to you because they're not just songs we're singing to, to, to enjoy them, even though we like the songs but they're songs to teach. Uh, Lord, you're leading me in a cloud by day and then in the night, lo, you're a burning flame. Everywhere I go, I see you. That's the message of Exodus. That's the message of the people in the wilderness and their wandering. God was present. God wants us to see him. God has given us even more than they had because they had the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night, we have God's presence inside us with the Holy Spirit and we have the opportunity to see God's word every single day, and to read it and to understand it and to struggle with it. And God leads us along our way. And we're going to remember God in the bread and the cup today as we come for our time of communion. But I want to I wanna list the songs that we did today and that we're going to do. Shine, Jesus, shine. Go before us and show us the way even in the night. Exodus 13, 21. Everywhere I go, 
You are present in our lives. You are one thing. Deuteronomy 6 says this over and over again. Uh, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. And it means that the Lord your God is one thing. These are the days of Elijah. We are the voice in the desert crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Come behold the wondrous mystery. The wondrous mystery of communion. The wondrous mystery of God's grace that is coming to us in God's presence with us in the cup. And in the bread. And then, O Lord, you're beautiful. We'll sing that as our last song all month. The beauty of God's Son. The beauty of God's desire for a place to dwell among us. The beauty of God's guidance on our journey. And I'm especially thinking of that beauty and that guidance today. And I'll be thinking of that Friday and Saturday because the beauty of God's guidance for Jessica and Cody and the beauty of God's guidance that he's already provided uh, for another wedding that was done uh, in this church and with this church people and that was Wade and Sierra God's guidance for all the things that are going on and and it's been it's been a struggle and it's been a joy I'm sure and it's going to be a struggle and it's going to be a joy And our relationship with our church and our relationship with God and with our people and our community, these are things that God wants to teach us. Everywhere we go, we see him, but everywhere we go, he teaches us. So I want you to take out your communion liturgy, and I want to share that with you. I'm going to stay here because I don't have my other uh, little microphone on. So I'm going to I'm going to stay here so they can hear me online. And all of you online, if you want to join us in this time of communion, get you a piece of bread or get you something to drink, uh, get you some juice or get you some diet coke, whatever it is you have, and join because. It's the Lord's table, and the Lord's table is not confined to this building. The Lord's table is open to everyone. The Lord is here. Walk with us, with those who are disappointed, confused, and frustrated, with those trying to make sense of their world. His Spirit consoles us. Walk with us as we talk and try to understand our story and your story, how you lead us on our journey home to your place of total forgiveness. His Spirit gives us understanding and the ability to forgive others and ourselves. Walk with us as we listen to Jesus, understand his forgiveness, grasp the magnitude of what he has done. His compassion and love for us is immense. His spirit brings us joy. And so with this community and with all the world gathered in his name, we say, Jesus, we invite you to this table. Stay with us because our day is uncertain and we need your presence. Stay with us, Jesus, as we come to this table, recognizing our foolishness and your wisdom. At the Last Supper, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and said, This is my body which is broken for you. Each time you eat this, remember me. And then he lifted the cup and he gave thanks to God and he said, this is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, remember me. I invite you to break the bread and drink the cup with us today and we're reminded here that all who believe and trust in Jesus are welcome. We are all God's chosen people, for Christ invites all to his table. Let's pray together. Today, Jesus, be our guest and also our host at this table, that we may know you in the sharing of the bread and the cup. It is not our table, a Protestant table, but it is your table. And we break this bread to remember the body of Christ, which is broken for us and reshapes our story. We drink the cup to remember the blood of Christ, which is shed for us and brings us new life. And we share the cup in your forgiveness that sends our sins 
as far as the east is from the west. Send your spirit on us that this bread and the cup may be the body and blood of Christ, so that we may be Christ's body redeemed by your blood in service and divine compassion to the world, the people you love. Inspire us, Lord, to travel with you and see Christ's presence in the stories of our lives. Amen. closing song.
Thank you for being in the radiance of God's beauty, in the, the radiance of God's grace, in the presence of God as he comes to us and says, I'm everywhere. I'm everywhere in everything you see, in everything you're doing, in everything that is part of life. So go in God's presence. Go with God's grace. Go with God's provision in the wilderness, and he will be with you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.